Welcome back to Betrayal at House on the Hill with the Widow's Walk expansion. All right, let's continue. Up first, we're going to have, of course, Darren Flash Williams. And what I forgot to do last time, there are these little tokens uh, representing each of the characters. This is a one only, once, one time only ability, which means you get plus one knowledge if you end your turn here. So I'm going to put his token in this room. So we remember that if he ends his turn here again, uh, you don't get the ability another time. You only get it once. So there are these little tokens that come with the game. All right, he has a movement of six. Where's he going to go? Um, I think, I don't know what he's going to do. I think he's just going to take one step into this next room. So we pull the tile off the top. It is a ground floor basement, so it does work. And he finds the laundry. And it says, if you end your turn here, you may discard an item card to draw an item card from the discard pile. Well, he doesn't have any item cards. Uh, and so I'm not sure what that particular symbol means. Uh, maybe that's the one-off ability. Anyway, this is definitely an item um, card that he's going to draw, and he'll have to stop his movement there. And so we will connect... Uh, we'll connect those two doors like that, I think. Well, no, he doesn't have to do it that way. He might do it this way. Uh, so that he can end up going over this way. So this is uh, Zoe up here and the upper landing. Okay, so he has to stop his movement because he has to draw a card. And he gets to draw an item card. And let's see what item he finds in the laundry room. He finds the sacrificial dagger. It's a weapon. A twisted shard of iron covered in mysterious symbols and stained with blood. Oh, great. So when making a might attack with this weapon, you roll three extra dice, maximum of eight dice, but you must make a knowledge roll first. Uh, and it tells you what the effect is based on your knowledge roll. So he does have now the sacrificial dagger. So that's not a bad item to have. All right, that uh, is his first turn. Up next is going to be the professor. Professor here is in the panic room. Now remember if we rolled a three plus here while moving out of the panic room, you can go to any room with a dumb waiter, but we do not have any rooms with a dumb oh no, ah, excuse me. This is a dumb waiter. That's what this is. This is from the expansion. This is a dumb waiter card. Should have uh, should mention that. Alright, that's the dumb waiter. And so he could roll a three plus and just move here, but I don't think he's gonna bother. I think the professor has a movement speed of four and he's going to motor all the way to the roof and if we look at the roof landing it says um, leads to and from the upper landing any room tile that can be placed on the upper floor can also be placed on the roof so he's going to start going he's going to go to the roof how he's going to do that he has four movement he's going to go one two three takes him to the upper landing and four takes him to the which you can't see here, four takes him to the roof landing. So he's going to be off on the, in the roof landing, but that's the end of his turn. He didn't actually expose another room, and so we're just going to leave him off there. He just did nothing but movement. Over to Zoe, who was uh, bitten last time. She's up here in the upper landing, uh, and so she is going to, she has a speed of four. She's just going to take one step further in the upper area. The next tile is an upper ground and basement, so this one applies, and she gets a dusty hallway. All right, well, there's no special anything there, so she just enters a dusty hallway. Uh, and I'm gonna readjust the tiles and camera a little bit here so she can continue on. So that's one movement, she has three more. All right, left. so continuing on with her movement, that's one, two, she's gonna go over here. And she's in the upper level, so the next tile is upper and ground, so it applies. And she finds a bloody room ooh, with an item in it. But she's going to have to stop because it is a card. So she finds the bloody room. <laughs> Lovely. Moves in there. And she finds an item. So the item off the top of the deck. She finds dark dice. Are you feeling lucky, punk? Okay, it says once per turn you can roll three dice. Uh, wow. And these are the things that happen to you. If you um, roll the dice. So she has the dark dice. She can roll it. Does she want to roll three dice this turn? 
and see what she gets. That's pretty dangerous. If you roll nothing at all, you reduce all of your traits to the lowest value above the skull symbol. Discard the dark dice. Ouch, that is brutal. Or you can draw an event card, gain a mental trait. Immediately move to an adjacent room. No, uh, hmm, gain a physical trait. Ah, what the heck. She's crazy. She's got to be crazy to be hanging out with the professor and Darren anyway. So she's going to roll three dice. We're going to see what she gets. Come on, high roll. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, well, she's going to have to discard the dark dice. She rolled a blank. Reduce all of your traits to the lowest value above the skull symbol. Discard the dark dice. Wow. That's... Uh, that's pretty much game over for her. So she got bitten the first time, and now all of her traits move to uh, uh, the one just above the skull symbol. Now you can't die before the haunt happens, <laughs> luckily for her. Uh, so she cannot lose any more of her traits, but they all go down to the minimum. Ouch, that is, uh, that's pretty much game over for her. So anyway, <laughs> brutal. All right, I'm gonna readjust the camera again. I'm gonna do one more turn for each uh, of the three characters, and we'll call that an episode. Wow, that was bad luck for us. Anyway, so we're back to the Flash. Now he's got six movement and the Sacrificial Dagger. No problem, he's just gonna go one, two, three, and explore a new tile. It is a ground and basement, so it applies. He finds the Menagerie. It also has a dumb waiter in it. This is another new tile. Once per game, if you end your turn here, put your Explorer token here and gain one physical trait. Put your explorer token here and gain one physical trait. Oh, okay. Yes. So, um, he's going to move in here. He's going to have to end his turn here. And yes, indeed. So he's going to have to put his little explorer token here, which are these little ones representing him because you can only do it once. Once per game, if you end your turn here, uh, he can gain a physical trait, but I think we have to have the event happen first. So actually before we put that token on, the event may uh, prevent him from doing anything. So he draws a top card of the event and he gets footsteps. The floorboards slowly creak, dust rises, footprints appear on the dirty floor. Wow. And then as they reach you, they're gone. Roll one die and explore in the chapel rolls an additional die on this roll. Roll one die. <laughs> one. Well, the best he can get is uh, two, I think. Does I read that right? Yeah, roll one die. Wow, this is not good. He rolls a one. Hmm. Lose one speed. Wow, he can afford that. That's not a problem. Lose one speed. Okay, well, and then that gets discarded. That was uh, not a great event. So let's take a look at his stuff here. He loses one speed. Well, one tick. I'll puts him down to five. But he ended his turn here so he can add one physical trait. But you know what he's going to do? He's going to add it to might. So might and speed are physical traits. So his might now is going to be four. His speed is going to be five. So he's still doing extremely well. Up next is the professor who is up in the roof landing. So I'm going to readjust the camera once again and we're going to do the professor. All right. So we have the professor up here. He's just going to take one step to the left. We draw a tile. It is upper. So that applies to the roof and to the upper floor. And he finds the gallery, and it's an omen. You can choose to fall to the bathroom if it's in the house. Well, it isn't if you do take one die of physical damage. So he's not doing that, but he's in the gallery. It is an omen card that he must draw. And so I'm just going to readjust the camera so we can read the card, and we're going to see what happens to him. All right, so I've zoomed out a lot because that way we'll be able to actually look at the omen card. He finds a medallion. A medallion is ins uh, inscribed with a pentagram. You are immune to the effects of the pentagram chamber, crypt, and graveyard. Cool. So the medallion prevents him from having any problems in those rooms, but he must make a haunt roll. All right, a haunt roll, which is six dice. And there are now two omens on the board. So if he rolls only one tip, the haunt will begin. But he rolls two, four, five. So guess what? The haunt isn't happening yet. And that's going to be the end of his turn. Up last for the episode will be the bitten, bashed, and beaten Zoe. <laughs> so we're going to go over to zoom down to her. 
and she's going to have uh, one more turn. That will be it. So the house has been extremely harsh to poor Zoe so far. She's got a movement of uh, four left, so she's going to move one to here. And we pull a tile, and she is in the upper area of the house, so this tile will apply. We flip it over. Ooh, it's another omen card. Yee! And it is the servant's quarters. All right, well, she gets to put it on that way. She's in the servant's quarters. Omen card. And the omen card that she draws off the top of the deck is the mask. A somber mask to hide your intentions. Once during your turn, you can attempt a sanity roll to use the mask. If you get a 4+, uh, you can put or take, can put on or take off the mask. If you put on the mask, gain 2 knowledge, lose 2 sanity. If you take off the mask, you gain 2 sanity and lose 2 knowledge. Or 0-3, to three, you can't use the mask this turn. But, well, she's not going to... Not going to bother using the mask. She's down to her minimum ability on everything, but it is an omen. So she's going to have to make an omen roll. Two, four, six dice. Again, now we have three omens out. If she rolls two or less pips, the haunt begins. Oh, not even close. Two, four, six, eight, uh, seven. Pfft. No problem. No haunt. I'm going to zoom out and we're going to wrap up this episode. All right, so there you have it. Uh, oh, and I, give, I did forget to put the little token. I'll do that right now into this room. Uh, so they've all had a couple of turns. So I think the one who's looking the most dangerous right now is uh, Darren with his sacrificial dagger. Of course, Professor not doing too bad with the medallion. Zoe is absolutely beaten. She's been bitten. She's got the mask, which doesn't really do her too much good. And she's down to her minimum stats on everything. Of course, you cannot die until the haunt is revealed. So she cannot lose any more stats. But boy, did she get beaten up. So not a good house for Zoe. All right. So thanks so much for watching along. Uh, this is Betrayal at House on the Hill. So thanks so much for your uh, subscriptions, your likes comments all very much appreciated so join me next time for the continuation of betrayal at house on the hill with the widow's walk expansion we have darren the professor and zoe the little girl exploring this crazy house trying to figure out what's going on in a bee horror type fashion so thanks so much for watching along and we'll catch you next time